Hi, everybody. I'm Isaac. Uh, thank you for indulging my incomplete thought. Um, so obsession. We often describe people as being uh, obsessed with things. My wife said uh, our daughter is obsessed with food. Um, I almost believed it when she burst into tears when my box of business cards didn't have a piece of cake inside. <laughs> my mother-in-law thinks my son is obsessed with tights. <laughs> this isn't a Halloween costume. Um, no, he's, he's not obsessed with tights. He's just you know, defending the planet from robotic raccoon bats. Um, I thought maybe my wife was obsessed with the occult. <laughs> But it turns out, this is a Halloween costume, but it turns out she's not. Uh, apparently every woman in the world yearns for the forbidden love between Edward and Bella. So, <laughs> so these, these aren't obsessions. Um, these are interests, these are hobbies, these are preferences. Um, these people are, are not compulsively preoccupied with these topics. Cake and tights and vampires, they're not their single-minded pursuits. So think about it. Obsessions drive people to meticulously remove the veins of a stillborn baby. To make 4,000 model airplanes from walrus tusk. To categorize every known species on the planet. To continue to weaponize atomic energy, even after the unconditional surrender of Germany. To spend 50 years hand-blowing glass flowers, 850 different species of glass flowers. That is a glass flower. <laughs> to harness lightning into a more manageable alternating current. Or to kill one of every species in the African savanna and put it in his living room. I've been to this living room. So these behaviors haven't disappeared. These types of people still exist. So what are they obsessively working on now? I propose They've abandoned our natural world, and they're now compulsively preoccupied with the virtual world. Hallelujah. They stare at <laughs> You know what this says, don't you? Uh, they stare at iPhones instead of butterflies. They dissect, <laughs> they dissect motherboards instead of bodies. They hunt online instead of on safari. So what changed? Has everything to be discovered in the natural world been discovered? Well, of course not. Our understanding of the natural world is incomplete at best, and some would argue we know nothing about it. Has the incentive structure changed? I don't think so. Even though benefactors of finance and profited uh, exploration and these people's obsessions, the people themselves don't do it to get rich. They must do it. Since we've moved beyond subsistence living in the Western world, has our attention now turned to the maintenance of our social construct? What does that even mean? <laughs> Maybe I'm just confusing the tool with the research. Someone had to invent magnifying technology that enabled us to see the stars better. Someone had to develop the transportation technology to find the new world. Are digital technologies just tools? And if so, is the development of tools distracting from our advancing understanding of our natural world. I really don't know. I need to think about it more. I want you all to think about it more. Uh, for my colleagues and myself, this feeds an ongoing series of interests, questions, ideas, and discussions. There's one example where all this craziness comes together. Remember that previous example of the guy inventing the A-bomb? He refused to give up? Well, after Hiroshima, he had, he had a change of heart and dedicated his life to pure non-defense research by founding the Fermi National Accelerator Lab. At Fermi Lab, philosophers work side by side with physicists to try and discover what the universe is made from. They accelerate matter and antimatter to near the speed of light and they crash it together to create energies that haven't existed since the Big Bang. Why? There's not a practical application for this technology yet. There's no big paycheck at the end of the day. Then why do they do it? Because they must. Thank you very much.